180 Studios and GCS, this is Dragon TV. I'm your host, Tessa Moore, filling in for Daryl Williams, who's out sick today. The World Fair is coming to GCS this Saturday at 9 a.m. in the Upper School Forum. Elves are still needed to wrap stocking gifts for Grassroots Homeless Shelter. There will also be an all-school tag day this Thursday to benefit Grassroots. But first in our news, Winter Formal. The Winter Formal is December 13th. It's the first major social event of the year and an exciting GCS tradition, but it also marks the first dance experience for many students. So what should new students know about the Winter Formal? We go now to our freshman in the field, Jabril, to learn more about the secret art of dance. Thanks, Tessa. And I'm here with Josh today to teach me how to dance because I can't dance and the Winter Formal is a dance and that's coming up soon. Now, Josh, can you, tell me, can you show me the, the, some dance moves? Yeah, so here we go. We're going to start off with just a little uh, two-step. Just move your arms a little bit. Really go with the rhythm. Then we can start with a little bit of this. There you go. And then you can do, uh, do a little bit of um, feet change like that. There you go. And you can do a little uh, Dougie, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, your turn. Uh, okay. okay. I want to say I can do this, but I can't. Okay, let's move on to the next move. All right. Um, we can do a little crisscross of the feet like this. There you go. And you can do a little uh, nay nay. Like that. Oh, that one I got to oh, attempt. You can do that one pretty well. Let's try it again. There you go. And uh, I think that's all the moves we have for today. Thank you, Josh. Next, we'll move, next we will move on to Patrick Grady to show us how not to dance during at the Winter Formal. Twerking and all forms of twerking should be avoided. What is twerking? I'm glad you asked. Twerking is a type of dancing which an individual dances to music with thrusting hip movements and a low squatting stance. There are many different forms of twerking. Putting the leg up twerk. Wall twerking. Chair twerking. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Split twerking. Upside down twerking. <laughs> a good rule of thumb is to respect yourself and respect others. No pulling hair, grabbing, spanking, or pelvic thrusting. You should not make it rain $1 bills on your dance partner. It's also important not to bend over farther than 90 degrees on the dance floor. The best dancing is 10 to 30 degrees. You should also not overtouch someone in their swimsuit areas. You should also not move your swimsuit areas in suggestive or provocative manners. In fact, it's best not to move at all. If you are slow dancing, you should allow appropriate distance between the partners. As a measurement, all couples should dance with a gap the size of Eddie Howlett between them. Another tip for dances is to respect the dance circle. At those times, at times, people abuse the dance circle by dancing sarcastically or dancing in an underwhelming manner. It's basically the worst thing you can do at a dance. Thank you for that great information, Patrick. I can't wait to boogie down. Jabril, will you be attending Winter Formal? I actually haven't decided yet. Isn't it your duty as a reporter to go? I haven't been assigned to the dance yet, though. No. So you don't want to go? No, I'm actually not a very good dancer. Is it because no one's asked you? Yeah, uh, probably if the right person asked me to go. And if the wrong person asked you? Probably, I'd probably just say I was busy. Well, 
would you maybe want to go with me? Yeah, actually I'm really busy this Saturday. How about next time? Okay. Tessa! GCS is famous for its enriching and rewarding academic programs as well as its invincible athletic departments. What may not be as widely known is that we have an equally impressive enrichment club program. Today's enrichment club program is showcased as the Garden Club, which was created by celebrity English teacher Mr. Matson. The Garden Club has been a core GCS club for several decades now and supplied several bounteous crops over the years. We now go to Kathleen Delianibus and Eddie Bernetti, our two veteran garden reporters in the field. This is Kathleen, garden reporter for Dragon TV, reporting live from outside the forum area where we are learning about garden today. Can someone go get Sharpie and... Can you tell us a little bit about the gardening club? I'd be delighted. My name is Walter Matson, by the way. Um, the garden club has been in existence for, I think, four or five years now. And the whole idea is for us just to learn how to work in the earth. Because, as Thomas Jefferson once taught us, the farmer is the recipient of the last virtues of mankind. And so that's what we're, we're, we're holding that flame alive here. And what we're doing now is it's you know it's autumn, and so we're tilling the ground and we're planting uh, cold weather crops. So we have some peas and beets and spinaches and kales and collards and those kinds of things that can actually winter over. So that's what we're up to these days. And out of all these, what are you? What's your favorite uh, plant you have right now? My my favorite plant. Favorite one. Favorite vegetable you're planting. Um, I love kale. Uh, kale is very good for you. Very nutritious and it's very hearty. This is Eddie Hollett, garden reporter from Dragon TV, reporting live from the garden with varsity captain of the garden club, Alex Myers. Alex, tell us about the garden club. The garden club, we are a, a select elite few of individuals who come here on Tuesdays and Thursdays to sit here in the garden and uh, plant vegetables. As Jefferson once said, the virtue of America lies in the heart of the human farmer. So that's what we try to do here. Amen. So, so what are we doing today? Today, we are clear, currently clearing out our excess beds and uh, start planning for the fall season. So, uh, how does one become a varsity gardener? Oh, well, look at these people. Pan left. Look at these people. That's how. I mean, <laughs> you'll get the idea later. Um, but uh, they're hard workers. They have a love of the earth. They understand that the modern world is encroaching on all of the things that make uh, human life livable. And they're preserving some of the old ways here. So. And you know, if there aren't any farms, there's no food. So that's how. Yeah. Now, is, um, who's the best gardener here? Um, I don't like to make those kinds of distinctions. You know, I love all my children, and I love all these gardeners. And uh, they all do a job. Maybe Maniba, maybe. She might want to come out and say a few words, I think. But uh, she is just sort of silent and steady. So it could be Maniba. But I don't know. There's a lot of good contenders over here. Tell us about the Garden Club gossip. Well, there's been a lot of Garden Club gossip, but one main thing that's been coming up recently is there was a story about a, an individual who decided to plant strawberries going into the fall season. Like, what kind of person would do that? You can't play strawberries in the fall season. I know. It, it's, it's very yes. saddening that that type of incident happened here at the GCS community. Now, why is uh, Gardening Club the best club at GCS next to Dragon TV? Oh, uh, why, why, why? Well, I guess the answer is, as I said before, it has to do with all the fundamental things of life. Food, earth, soil, rain, water. We don't look to the market, as some clubs do around here, for their sustenance. We look to, you know, the creator and the world and our own labor. It's very American, that's the other thing. It's the most American club because as good juniors, these are all juniors, I think, for the most part over here, or former juniors will tell you, the American farmer, the yeoman farmer, is the emblem of all that's good and virtuous in this great nation. And what is the best vegetable to plant in the case of uh, Ebola apocalypse? Oh, well, you want to do carrots, because carrots are good for your eyesight, so you can see those zombies from pretty far away. And it's just, they're overall, they're good. We're talking about zombies. Ebola, not zombies. No, no, I said, I said, I want to deal with zombies. 
All right, thank you. That's Alex Myers. This is Eddie Hallett, food reporter from Dragon TV. Happy gardening. Back thank to you, you very Darren. much. Thank you, Kathleen and Eddie, for that fruitful report. We'll now pause a moment for a word from our sponsors. In a land far, far away, there was a relationship that was never meant to be. You know my family was eaten by dragons. Forbidden Love, the tragedy of Shivam and Chivette. Coming soon to a theater near you. Forget something? What are you talking about? Oh, what are you doing there? Saving your life? You know how many diseases you can get without washing your hands? Pneumonia. E. coli. Maybe even Ebola. Hi. I'm Cameron Ludwig, here reminding you to wash your hands to save lives. Now screw up for 20 seconds or sing happy birthday twice! Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy Hi, I'm Cameron Ludwig, here reminding you to wash your hands. The weather has definitely cooled, but winter has still not fully arrived. We now go to Emmanuel in the field for this weekend's weather. Thank you, Tessa. This is Deja reporting from the weather because Emmanuel is not here today. So for the temperature for the month of December, it will start in the low 50s, and then at towards the end of the month, it will start in the low 40s. But who knows what will happen when Santa comes to town? This means everyone should be wearing a sweater or coat to school. And if you don't have one, I highly suggest you look in the lost and found. There's some nice stuff there. Don't do that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But if you don't have a sweater or a coat, I suggest you find it because you don't want to become frozen. Some good news is that most sports this season are indoors, so you can show those guns without feeling cold. Anyways, also some good news is that there are some birthdays for the month of December, some birthdays for the dragons. December 2nd, Paul Washquick. An interesting fact about Paul is that he plays the violin. And on the 3rd, Simi, Simi, sorry Simi, Ilambare, sorry for the mispronunciations, I'm, I'm trying, but she's a soccer champion. And on the 8th, we have Si Wong Choi and Ashley Good. You know, Ashley Good, tennis champion, you guys should all hug her, give her a round of applause for her birthday. Then on the 11th, we have Derek Zhang. So give all those fellow dragons a little pat on the back. And this is Deja from The Weather. Back to you, Tessa. Well, that's our show for today, folks. Stay tuned for more stories from our school, community, and the world. I'm Tessa Moore, and this is your Moment of Zen. You should not ever touch someone in their swimsuit areas. You should also not move your swimsuit areas in a suggestive or provocative manner. In fact, it's often good not to move at all. If you're slow dancing, you should allow appropriate distance between your, the partners. As a measurement, all couples should dance with a gap the size of Eddie. Another tip for dancers is to respect the dance circle. At times, people abuse the dance circle by dancing sarcastically or dancing in an underwhelming fashion. It's basically the worst thing you can do in a dance. Thank you very much, Patrick. I can't wait to boogie down. For lessons, see Patrick Grady. <laughs>